Hello, in this AFNI video on a rainy day, we're going to look at EPI anatomical alignment within a single subject's data. We're continuing this series of talks on alignment. This is the AFNI 14 presentation, so if you don't have it open already, you can go into AFNI handouts and open up the AFNI 14 PDF. The main tool for alignment of a subject's EPI and anatomical volume is alignepinat.py. It's actually a wrapper for the more general affine alignment tool 3D Alineate. Alignepinat exists because the alignment of a subject's EPI and their own anatomical is such a common processing step, and it has uh, some generally broad features such as the fact that the EPI and the anatomical have differing contrasts and the resolution is usually something around one millimeter isotropic for the anatomical and three millimeters for the EPI volume, etc. So anyways, a lot of the default settings in here are for affine alignment for this specific case. And this is a more general affine alignment tool. And oftentimes if you're using AFNI proc for your fMRI processing, which we would strongly recommend that you use. This program is kind of used under the hood and some of the options that you might provide here can also be passed through with AFNI proc. Okay, um, the defaults, as I mentioned, are set for consideration of a T1 weighted and EPI volume of the same subject. So we assume that there aren't huge differences in structure or between the two volumes or distortions in the EPI although sometimes your EPI volumes can be quite distorted, so you might want to deal with that in a, in a separate step. The cost function is set for this um, particular kind of uh, input where the data sets have different relative tissue structures. The, or there are lots of other aspects that you can combine with the alignment step here. For example, deobliquing the data, uh, some motion correction, and attaching other alignments. And these are all processes that involve alignment matrices in one form or another. And so these can be combined as a single transform when they're applied, which is an important step to avoid unnecessary smoothing in your data, as we discussed in an earlier uh, part of this video series. You can also combine uh, slice timing correction uh, and apply it along with your data set. And finally, you can perform some quality control checks. Something that we've noticed is sometimes the, there are DICOM header problems where the orientation of a data set will be incorrect. So for example, anterior, posterior might be swapped or anterior might be incorrectly uh, put in the place of where the right left axis is. Many of those changes you can see visually. However, a left-right flip problem is almost impossible to notice visually because of the high symmetry, the left-right symmetry of the human brain. So um, anyways, we'll, we'll discuss how you can check for this automatically with this, this program as well. As we said, Align API Net is built to work on aligning anatomical and EPI volume specifically. The defaults tend to work for a very large number of cases, which is great. Uh, however, fMRI, if anyone has looked at fMRI data before, they know there's a huge variety in quality or just quirks can happen. And so uh, you can expect that sometimes you'll have to play around with options in the program to get it work for some data sets. We always, always, always recommend that you visually check your alignment results you can't just trust the fact that a program finishes and that it didn't crash, for example, that it, it got the alignment correct. It really requires human visualization for every subject. If you find something that didn't go right with alignment, um, here are some, some kind of problems you might look at to diagnose and, and what to do. So if, if your data sets aren't well aligned to start with, if they don't overlap well, if their center of masses are very different, or if they have a large relative rotation, for example, if you acquired data sets during different scanning sessions, then these are all options you can use to try to overcome some of those differences and to open up the parameter space for the program to find uh, alignment. 
If your data sets, particularly the EPI, has poor contrast, which, which can happen, then sometimes you might want to adjust your cost function. For example, um, LPA is one you could try or these other ones. Something that also happens at times is uh, subjects will have a contrast agent applied. For example, in macaque studies, a fairly common contrast agent is called myon, and that can actually change the relative tissue brightness. And so now you're in a situation where uh, instead of the default LPC cost function, you might want to use something like LPA. That's something we've noticed. If your data uh, isn't very uniform, so if the brightness pattern changes quite a lot going from the edges to the middle, then that may also basically uh, have the effect of changing the contrast of your data set. And so a cost function might be, a different cost function might be useful. And also, uh, we work in a large clinical center, so we see a lot of data sets that have things like stroke, lesions, and tumors in them. And these might require different considerations because of the, the structural changes in the data set. We also work uh, with a lot of non-human data, monkeys, rats, etc. And those might require special considerations because of the voxel size or contrast agent or, or something like that. And we also have come across uh, cases where we need to align data sets of different modalities beyond MRI or even beyond fMRI, such as diffusion imaging or CT-PET. And these different types of data have different SNR, different tissue contrasts and different properties. So um, if you're analyzing anything which really isn't a, a standard data set, then it might be worth just asking on the message board for any starter advice because someone in the group may have worked on it before and uh, you may be able to get a kind of a running start in, in looking at uh, your alignment. And when you're checking the quality of your alignment, it's really important that you look at what counts or what's important to be aligned in a data set. Here's a case where someone came to us a while back and they said, oh, my, my EPI, this underlying data set, my anatomical, this overlay don't line up well because of this mismatch. And unfortunately, uh, that's not just that it's good that they're looking at the data, but that's not a correct way to evaluate it because here this EPI has bright CSF here and the anatomical has dark CSF. So the fact that the, the outer edge here doesn't line up actually makes sense. And if we turned on the opacity in this overlay, actually we'd see that the parts that matter, the structural features here, actually line up quite well. And that's that's an overall um, true point in when you want to look at alignment. You don't just want to look at the edges or something like that. You want to look at all the structures and details inside, such as the ventricle boundaries, tissue boundaries, gyri sulcal patterns, and things like that. That's one reason why we have uh, looked at made more tools for specifically looking at two data sets for alignment. This at snapshot volreg is a useful one where we have one of the data sets uh, as a, the underlay and the edges of the other data set as overlay. So we can check and see how the sulcal and gyral patterns match up quite clearly. You can also see the field of view of the brain and things like that. A number of alignment programs in AFNI now will create some of these images automatically to help you check your data quickly. Um, you can also run this program, for example, again, to efficiently check uh, your data for alignment quality. There are a number of tools and functionality and button presses that you can use in the GUI to help you evaluate alignment. So let's take a quick look at some of these. I'm going to open up the terminal and change into the directory AFNI data 6 AFNI. And something I'm going to note is this last one in the list here at add edge refers to, if I skip ahead for a moment in the next slide, uh, there's a functionality, an option that you can provide to align API in that to create some data sets and edges and then run a script to, to view them automatically in the GUI. So I'm going to go to this slide here and copy and paste this script to run. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to set it running while we look at the data. So first I'll open up AFNI to have that running. Okay. And now I'm going to paste this other command from 
this slide here, 62. And we'll just come back to that when it's finished running in a, in a couple minutes. Okay, so now let's uh, continue with this list of, of ways to look at data. So I'm going to close my coronal image and I'm just going to keep my sagittal and axial images for a moment. And I'm also going to open up a new controller. And while I'm, I'm looking at these, these button presses, what I'm going to do is show them basically how they look for a couple different types of, of data. So here's another anatomical. OK, so um, essentially there, these features work kind of better or, or less good for different types of data sets to look at. So I'm going to overlay in this A controller for these A panels. I'm going to overlay an EPI data set, this EPI R1. Okay. And in here, I'm going to overlay. Uh, there's a second anatomical data set in this directory, so I'm going to overlay it. Okay. And something we can notice immediately is if we don't turn down the opacity in our data sets, then it's a little bit hard to see the underlay. So what I can do is turn down the opacity, right? Probably not that much, but maybe some intermediate value. Okay. Now, as I'm, as I'm looking at my data here, uh, one thing I'll notice is that in order to see more details within my data set, what I'd like to do is have the color bar really stretch mostly across the values that exist in my data set. I don't want to kind of waste color bar space um, on data on values that don't exist. So my overlay here goes from zero to some value and even here goes from zero to some value. They're both all positively valued. So let me turn on the kind of pause only uh, range for the color bar. So now it goes from zero to some maximum value in each case. And here, even in my, um, my EPI overlay, now I can see the tissue contrast between gray and white much, much better. Okay, so that's, that's definitely helpful here. And also in this data set down here, I see the gray white contrast pretty well. So I might be happy with this, or if I wanted to change color bars overall, what I might do is right click on the color bar, choose a new color scale. At the bottom of the list, near the bottom, are some that have better properties in terms of more uniform uh, change across the entire color bar. So these are this viridis magma plasma have been developed specifically so that uh, as the number of values change, the color gradation and brightness change is uh, as uniform as possible. So let me just change both of these. Why not? Just as an example here. Okay. So here I have my data sets now, and I, again, I see kind of a gray-white difference pretty clearly in the overlays. So how can I check easily how, how it matches with the structures? Having the transparency on is one way, it's fine. Let's see, something else I can do is actually turn the overlay off for a second here in each case. And if I go to a panel and hit the U key, what that will do is it will toggle which one of the data sets is the underlay. So from what I loaded as overlay and underlay. And this will give me a sense of where structures are if I, if I toggle it quickly. And I'm going to close the crosshairs. And you can put a crosshairs right by, let's say, the edge of a structure and see how it appears, where it appears in both. This, this can be useful. It's a little tricky when the contrast difference is so strong, such as between EPI and anatomical, I find. And again, with all these alignments, uh, the ways to check alignment, personal taste will, will vary. And also with the kind of data sets, this will be more and less useful. If I'm down here in the anatomical versus anatomical side and I hit the U key, I can see actually here, this provides a very nice subtle check for how similar the structures are. I can see it's uh, the, the largest difference is in the kind of very inferior regions outside the brain. There's a small, maybe nodding difference. And actually, these data sets, none of them have been aligned. Uh, in this example here, they were just acquired in succession while the subject was in the scanner. So 
in, in one case, the subject may have moved a little bit or adjusted their head location. So we shouldn't be surprised to see a small differences. Okay, so the U key is very useful. Let me go back up here. If I hit, um, and if you notice one thing, I can tell whether, in this case in particular, it's hard to tell whether my underlay is the actual underlay or the overlay. If you see this letter right here, U, as I toggle between hitting the U key, you see that tells me whether I'm looking at what was loaded as the overlay or underlay. So I know I'm back looking at the underlay. Okay, now let's see if I go here and I hit the four key, the number four, this gives me this slider window here, and I can uh, see various fractions of the two data sets. And if I turn, hit the four key again, it'll turn off. Okay, so this basically toggles. And if I hit the five key, I get the same slider window functionality just in the opposite direction. Again, this may be more or less useful depending on the contrast. Here I can, I can tell that, for example, the ventricles may not line up so well. If I come down here and see what this looks like, I'll hit the four key and now I'm sliding left, right. And I get a sense of how similar the data are. I can also see the brightness difference pretty subtly. And if I hit the five key, now you can see the slider going up and down. And again, it's a very subtle uh, differentiation between these. Okay, uh, if I hit the six key, this one I quite like for judging alignment. It switches between having uh, the basically the transparency of the overlay. So it's zero opaque, and now it's 100% opaque. And as you go through here, you can see how the structures line up. And even with data sets of the opposite contrast, this gives you a good sense of alignment. And you can check visually where features overlay or, or not. So here you can you can get a sense of sulcal and gyral features being different. And again, six turns it off. Down here, if I hit the six key, um, again I can see how similar the the data sets are. Very similar. If I look in this image window here and hit the six key, I'll see where the largest differences are if I toggle around here or slide back and forth there. Okay. And finally, there's another key press. If you hit Shift-3, so the pound key, you'll see this checkerboard pattern. So now the overlay and underlay, uh, the neighboring squares represent one, one overlay, then the next one of the underlay, overlay, underlay, like that. And if I keep hitting Shift-3 or the pound key, it'll toggle between the two. I don't know that this is so useful, but it's a way that you can check the data sets when, when the contrasts are so different, it's hard to tell. If I come down to these data sets and hit the pound key and alternate, I get a bit of a sense of the difference. And um, there I turn it off, hit the three key and it, the pound. Okay, so I can, I can tell where things are a bit different. For example, back here, et cetera, and the three key. Can I turn that functionality off? So the four, five, and six key and the pound key all give some extra overlay underlay changes and the U key was useful for swapping overlay and underlay. I can turn the overlay back on by clicking this button or by hitting the O key to make the overlay reappear. Okay. And another really nice way to view alignment is to now hit the E key. And what the E key does is it turns the underlay into the, the edges of the underlay data set that was loaded in. So now here you can see the ventricle structure and I really get a sense of you know the data doesn't quite align. Or if I come here, let me turn down the opacity slightly. There, I, I can see how the sulcal and gyral features match up or, or not, as the case may be, uh, with quite a lot of detail. And if I look at the anatomical, the two anatomical data sets, I can see that they, in general, overlay quite, quite well. Okay, so that's the E key, and hitting it again will will turn it off for the panel that's in the the front there. So those are a lot of different ways to look at alignment in the AFNI viewer. Great. I'm going to close the session. 
And let me open up the terminal and I can see here that the uh, this command that I ran, align API net, has finished. And it, it because I use this minus, uh, minus add edge option, it gives me some instructions about what to do to make use of the outputs for that. So if I type, well, anyways, it, it's create, if I type ls minus ltr, it's created this new directory here, so I can cd add edge, and the other instruction, the terminal was for me to run at add edge, which is a, a script to drive AFNI. If you wanna see it, oh, well, the script exists in, in AFNI itself. Okay, so at add edge. Okay, and rearranges itself on my screen. Fine. Now it looks a, a little bit funny. First, let's see, there, there are instructions in the terminal here. So basically, the, the overlay edges and the purple are for the underlay edges. Fine. The, at the moment, it may look a little bit funny. If you notice the color bar range here says it's one instead of the range of 255 that it should be. So I'm just gonna toggle auto range off and then back on. And this is the correct range to use. And let me click up in the data set so the, this montage image is a little bit more useful. Okay, and what I'm looking at here are the edges before alignment. So uh, if if the data sets were, were well aligned, then I would see the, the cyan here and the red here line up quite well. I believe the cyan is the, uh, the EPI volume and the, the red or maroon here is the anatomical volumes edges. Okay, and you can see the EPI isn't quite whole brain, but there you go. So fine, this is before alignment. And if I want to go to the next entry, so basically after alignment, I can type two into the terminal and hit enter. And AFNI will change the data sets. Again, the color bar is a little bit off, but I'll just toggle auto range. And now when I look at alignment, I'll see that the red and the cyan match up uh, quite well in general. So the sulcal and gyral patterns for the most part all, all across are, are better. Maybe in the uh, the ventricle, it's it's not as good as it should be, but overall, it's a it's a pretty good alignment here. Okay, so that's just a way again, another case of looking at edges. In this case, pairs of edges to see how the quality of alignment is. So I'll quit and close the AFNI session. Okay, there we go. This is a list of, of things that we had looked at. And here's the at edge information again, and the script that we just ran as an example. The one more thing to note about the align API net, um, this, this command can perform left, right flip checking. So the idea is if you're shown an anatomical, and then you saw an EPI and a flipped version of the EPI, left, right flipped, would you know just by sight which one of these goes with this data set? I'll, I'll let you take a look at that and examine and make a guess. Okay, well the answer is I actually don't know. And the fact that I can't tell visually um, and that DICOM header information is also quite complicated means that I should be sure in a more rigorous or systematic way about whether I have a, an inconsistency between my data sets. So what I can do is have align API in that align both the anatomical and let's say the EPI as I provided, and then it can also perform a, a flip internally of the EPI, a copy, and align it. And then it will compare the cost functions between these and provide it, its own guess about whether there's a large difference in which cost function seems better. And then it will also provide me images so I can verify visually which alignment looks better, such as this. So now, if I take a look at 
one of the data sets and then the flipped version, I can tell whether it's correct or incorrect as was provided. And again, the cost function will provide me a guess at this, the, the relative cost function values, but I can also verify it visually. And again, the, the brain is left-right symmetric to a large degree, but when I look at the details of the sulcal and gyral patterns here versus here, I can tell that obviously this one is the, the correct one. Uh, surprisingly, the, these systematic left-right flips have been found in a lot of public data sets, including a few in Functional Connectome Project and Open fMRI and the Abide data sets. And so when we found these, we alerted the people who manage these data sets and projects so that they could correct it. And the main idea is it's um, not really wanting to, to go out and uh, criticize anyone, but Essentially, data analysis is hard, and there are so many details, and the DICOM format is really quite a difficult format. It can change across time and across scanners, so it's easy for small mistakes to creep in. It's just good to have as many safeguards as possible to know that your data is as correct as possible. One thing to note is this check is a relative left-right flip, so it checks the consistency between pairs of data sets, in this case an anatomical and an EPI. It doesn't tell you which one of them is correct and wrong. That's something that you have to go back and verify in your own analysis pipeline with your own raw data and things like that, but at least it alerts you to the problem. Checking for an absolute left-right difference is actually something we've looked at. It's quite a difficult and different problem because there's a lot of heterogeneity of data sets across, uh, or the way brains look across any group. And we'll see, we're, we're trying to work on this still, but at the moment, solving this left-right flip problem and kind of consistency check is useful. If you wanna be more sure about absolute left-right, the best way to go is to use a vitamin E tablet and put it on one side of the subject's head when you scan them, something like that, is, I, th I think the most common way. So. There you go. Um, if you want to read more about this work and see more examples, there's this nice paper by Daniel Glenn about it, and it describes the cases in, in more detail. And that covers everything here about aligning anatomicals and EPIs.